Good evening. Are you afraid of heights? This is episode 39 of the South African Equestrian Federation's podcast from the horse's mouth, where we're discussing what comes across as being a new initiative from the South African Equestrian Federation, but in fact has been on the cards for several years now to align us with FEI International Protocols. And that is the measurement of ponies by the SAEF for competition in South Africa. And we're very lucky to have in studio, as ever, our resident vet, Sheila Hegarty, as well as our legal counsel. You always know it's going to be a good show when there's a lawyer involved. And that's Peter Swanepoel, who sits on the SAEF Judicial Council. Thank you both for joining this evening. Good evening. Good evening. So, Peter, we were talking about this and saying that it's actually not a very new thing. This has been on the cards for a long time. Everyone was very surprised, or pretended to be, by the invitation for Sheila to do the first official measuring session was it this week, Sheila, at Kailami Park? Yes, it was actually yesterday. Okay. Um, but, Peter, you were explaining that this has been on the cards for a few years now. Yeah, as you know, uh, we, the, the SAF always, the sport is always evolving, and we have to get a, keep abreast of what's happening internationally and what's happening with the FEI. And so um, this was actually part of the Vetrex that changed. The, the FEI's Vetrex um, changed in 2020 already. Okay. And then we, uh, the SAFs, decided that they had to uh, follow suit. And, and, and we changed our rhetorics around, um, I think it was October, October 2021. And then it came in effect, the, the regulations came in effect the, the 1st of January 2022. So it's been on the table, it's been in effect from that date, mm -hmm. but it hasn't been enforced due to a lot of factors um, up to yesterday. Okay. Um, can we just discuss what those regulations are that changed from the FEI that then was adopted by the SAE? Yes, sure. So, so the vet, the vet uh, regulations of the FEI now says that um, we the, 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 we will take it up to eight years old, and then it, we will give a life height certificate, um, as well as an interim certificate that will be given between six and eight years. But that's only for ponies. The regulation that's applicable here, yeah, let, me, let me read that to you, that says that um, as of Jan January, um, the 1st of January, uh, let me just find it again. As of January 2022, all new registered SAF ponies must be measured in at a SAF measuring session and be issued with a SAF height certificate in order to be allowed to take part in SAF pony competitions. So, um, like I said, the SAF hasn't really been able to do that due to a lot of uh, factors not under our control. But um, we are doing that now, and we have decided to enforce this rule. And, and that's only... Uh, the, the rule doesn't preclude vets to do uh, measuring of heights and height certificates um, during vettings and... Uh, pre-purchase vettings and things like that. It's only for uh, competition purposes, for safe competitions. So taking okay. part in safe competitions. But I also just do want to touch on briefly that when you say SAEF has decided this, SAEF is comprised of the discipline associations, the DAs. That's correct. So yeah. the DAs have all, all been involved in this process. Yes. And they've all agreed on it. Is that correct? Yes. This was tabled by the uh, SAEF Exco, and then it was ratified by the council and the, the national council in where the the discipline associations mm -hmm. were rep represented or, um, all of them represented uh, approving this regulation okay. and the vetrex in general okay so now what's going to happen is it's going to have to trickle through the disciplines and be adopted by national provincial councils and enforced at the shows that's correct how long do people have to get ponies measured when, when is this going to come into place that if you arrive at a pony rider competition and you don't have your SAEF height certificate, you're not going to be allowed to compete. So we're not going to enforce it immediately. We, we're going to allow for a dispensation of transition, and we're only going to start refusing uh, entries into SAEF competitions without a SAEF measuring uh, certificate from March 2024. We're going to start measuring, having various measuring sessions now from uh, November, from this year, through all the way to the, the end of February okay. 2024. And then when we give you a, a height certificate um, in, in, in this period of time, it will be valid till the end of 2024. So from there on, we will do it annually. And that, But that's for ponies eight and under? That's correct. Okay. Yeah. Ponies, once they're measured at the age of eight or over? 
Yeah. They then maintain that SAEF height certificate. That's correct, yes. Okay. Sheila, you so you said you had your first measuring session yesterday. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Will you tell us a little bit about the protocol that is in place now to measure? Um, yes, we have, uh, first of all, we have to have uh, a measuring stick and it needs to be calibrated by a measuring authority. And who's a measuring authority? Well, there, there are various ones. Okay. It used to be SAPS, now we sent it to somebody out on, I think, Benoni or Brackman. Oh, that's interesting, okay. And they calibrate them and they give you a certificate. Okay. So the sticks that we are using to measure have been calibrated. They are probably pretty similar to every other stick that veterinarians use, but these have gone through the calibration process. So you basically know it's not faulty. That's correct. Okay. No one went and scratched a one out. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Just no. checking. Um, and then you, it's, there's two vets who are measuring now. It's not yeah. one. No, okay. it's two. And what do you take a set of measurements that goes back to the other vets? Do you have a punch up or is it, how do you come to well, an think, agreement? Well, uh, I in actual fact, I think there was only one horse we differed on yesterday. Okay. But um, out, out of, I think you said you did 23. 23. Okay. So if, we've, if we are slightly out, then we go back and we, we, we measure. But um, when I measure, I don't tell the other veterinarian what my measurement is. They go and measure, okay. and then they come back and say, okay, I got it at 148, and they got it at 147 and a half. And what very often happens is when the pony, when you start approaching the pony and you start doing this measuring, the pony tenses up and it can be a little bit higher, or, but later on it relaxes. So it's quite possible that when I approached it, it was 148, and then given a bit of time, it was 147 and a half. Okay. If there's a difference, I will go back and see whether it's relaxed and if it's 147 and a half. And then it's much better if we agree. <laughs> but the, the rules allow that um, in where, where we don't agree, that the lower measurement counts. Oh, okay. And then speak briefly about the surface as well, because I believe this is also part of the issue at play with, as Peter, you were saying, vets going and measuring at yards for a vetting or whatever, you don't always have access to an, a total level surface. And no. this is part of part of what's at play now. Well, it is, because when you ask people, they say, well, I've got something level. And when you arrive, and I, I have a um, spirit level that I go and check the surface, mm -hmm. I don't think I found one yard that actually does have a level surface because it's always sloped for wash off. Mm, even, mm. even in the stables, it's 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 sloped, mm. and it must be level in both directions. And if I happen to measure a pony, and it differs from one side to the other, because I always measure it from both sides, then I know the ground is not level. That's interesting. Yeah. So it, it's got to so it's got to be, and I think the regulation states it's got to be a minimum of three by three. Um, the surface or the area we had yesterday must have been at least eight by by three or four. I mean, it was very nice, nice yeah. and it must be level and obviously non-slippery. Mm, okay. So you don't want it on tiles. It's it's rough cement, but it's level. Mm. And um, the, what we do is we trot them out first. And why do you have to trot them out first, Sheila, for a measurement? Because in many instances, people will have their feet done. You can shave up to a centimetre off, but if you shave them too much, the horses become lame. Okay. And um, we're really here for the welfare of the animal, mm. and I think it's unacceptable to make their feet so low or so mm. short just in order to get them past as a pony. Absolutely. Um, and this is maybe a question for both of you. The the height issue for me is really one of fairness and mm. and great competition. Do either of you want to elaborate on your, your personal feelings about that? I mean, it's devastating for people, I think, when they've bought what they think is a, is a pony. I've had it happen with a friend from the UK recently, and they were so excited and got the measuring stick out and were heartbroken. But, you know, and they were saying at the time, she was joking and saying, oh, that's the difference between a zero on the end of the price, mm. you know, because if it's going to jump and be small, that's great. Now she's got something that's, a bit of a honey, um, but ultimately it's for fairness for child competition. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a very important thing that you mentioned there because for all uh, 
especially from SAF's point of view, because we what we want to do is to have everybody um, compete on the same level and in the same standard. So it's important for us to to have a, a standard that's fair to everybody. Everybody is measured at the same slab in, in Gauteng. Everybody is measured uh, with the same measuring sticks. Everybody is measured by the same beds, by the two same beds. So um, it's it, it just leveled the playing field. Mm. So I think that that is very important. And and obviously that's also involving and, and we'll engage with the public and, and see you know um, what suggestions that come from the public to make it even even more fair. Um, we've heard yesterday um, s someone suggests that we the bonus in terms of our regulations must be measured any every year annually in in any case. So we've um, we were thinking about um, saying that we won't measure bonus. That's uh, one forty seven, for instance. That's not necessary to bring them to a measuring session, as we know that. Um, you know that it, it's not on that cusp where it's difficult okay. to decide what um, or if it's fair or, or not fair. So, so yes, I think that um, that's the idea behind it: fairness and equitability to everybody. Mm. Sheila, uh, sorry, yes, carry on. No, I was just going to say I think there's also an element of safety because a pony has that's a very true. different stride, stride. Mm. to a larger horse, and then it becomes very difficult. What do the course builders build for? Mm. So you want them to to have level playing fields when they're competing. That's a great point, yeah. Than having something that's, um, when I went round in, in 2015, 2016, there was quite a few that measured in at 154. And when and you looked at the animal and you could see it wasn't a horse. And when I asked, why did you buy it? Why did you think it was a pony? Oh no, it had a life height certificate. At 154? Yeah. Now, and just to be clear, what, what is a pony measurement, Sheila? So without shoes, they must measure 148 and under, and with shoes, 149 and under. So grow hand, almost. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just being clear. <laughs> that includes, um, also as the FEI says, that up to 148.9 will be rounded down to 148. Okay. And 149.9 .9 will be rounded to 149. There's actually a lot of concessions that are, are happening here. Yeah. Okay. Um, Sheila, you all, you spoke briefly about um, the ponies can be a little bit tense, you know, when you approach them with a measuring stick. And I was interested that the first measuring session was not happening at a show, because to me, it made sense that we would take advantage of a show environment where all the ponies are there anyway and measure them. And I understand that this is actually in the interest of fairness, that they're not at a show. Well, you just explain that well, a little bit. Well, I think at, at a show, you've got the loudspeakers, you've got all the bunting, you've got horses competing in arenas. So the, the ponies are excited and they don't relax. And it, it does make a difference to the height when they're really tense. And um, there are quite a lot of things that do make a difference. So you can, and the FEI recommend that you can allow up to 10 minutes per animal to measure. So that you can you can um, calm the horse, he doesn't think you about to hit him over the head or anything like that, and it does. And I, I notice if you rush up to a pony and you measure it, and then you stand there and you talk and you're just very quiet and you go back, it definitely does make a difference. They definitely measure smaller. And how much smaller out of interest, like one fifty four to one forty eight? No, okay, just <laughs> change. It's, it's like it's like sort of maybe half a centimeter. Okay, okay. It's so it doesn't matter how long I wait with the 17 hand high horse. I'm just I'm just confirming no. that. Um, I do just want to remind anyone who's listening that if you do want to ask any questions of our esteemed guests, please do pop them in the comment section there so we can ask them. Um, Peter, there is the question now about what happens with these so-called honies. You know, they they not quite a horse, not quite a pony. And I know that you've been in some discussions with some of the disciplines. Would you mind just? I know it's not cemented. Yeah. Would you just give us a little bit of insights as to where that's going? Yeah, so it's very early days, but uh, there used to be a children's class for those ponies that, that didn't fit in um, and didn't measure in, but were still uh, between horse and pony. So now we, we're thinking of bringing that back and do something like a, a joint class with juniors, but have a split result class just to make it uh, 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 viable, you mm -hmm. know. As I think it's more fair to the horses because those ponies are very quick. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so so that's that's the idea, and it seems like um, uh, as a show jumping was was keen to talk uh, around the idea, and, and we hope to to be able to encourage um, that idea further and develop it and see if we can bring it back. 
So what I'm really hearing, which I like, as you said as well, like if the public have any 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 questions or offers or feedback or inputs, this is still an open discussion. You know, yes. as much as we yeah. are following FEI regulations, the sport is striving to be inclusive. We're not like you're not out to do anyone in. We want everyone to be able to come around the table and have a fair result. Yeah, it's our sport, you know, and, we, and, and that's why it's important for everybody to to bring um, to the table some suggestions, things that might work for us that's different from the international uh, uh, field. But um, at the end of we want to make it uh, a fair to everybody. Mm -hmm. And that's that's the aim. And the correct channel for communication is through the DAs to get to SAE. That's correct. I just yes. uh, want to yeah. be clear because sometimes yeah. that's always a little bit of, of a confusion. Yes. Sheila, you were speaking about um, the fact that you've done this session and that we're going to be rolling out sessions in Gauteng. How do other vets around the country, what is the process with becoming a, a vet who can give a measurement certificate? Um, well, I, we haven't really discussed it at the SA yet. Okay. I think... So will um, you be travelling a lot around South Africa at this time with your welfare courses? Well, I... I am going to do that, and that it's probably a good idea that that we have vets in in you know the big towns. Mm -hmm. I don't know that it's reasonable to have every vet in the in the mm -hmm. country doing it because right now we have so many differences in the measurements between vets that I think that the the smaller the group. Oh, I see what you're saying. So you were mentioning this earlier on that you were saying. You could be very consistent in your heights measuring measuring animals, and that another vet could be very consistent in theirs, and that your results could be exactly 0.2 of a centimeter, whatever, off across the board. So there, there is this. So it then probably does make sense to your point that those same vets are doing the round of measurements. Well, I think so because I think you perfect your technique, mm. and um... and to your point, it gives a more fair result. Yes, and and I and I think if you are going to uh, look, it's it's not to be prescriptive in mm. any way. So in no way does. And it I know you trained another vet y y yesterday yes. on the measurements. Yes. And, process. and 2015, we had we had a whole session in Natal where we trained vets, and what we did is we would each measure, as I said, and then come back and discuss it. And if somebody had something very different, we would then go back and and um, maybe they were just not on the highest point of the withers. Um, so you try and the idea is that it's got to be at the fifth thoracic vertebra. Okay. Um, we were asked that they wanted us to take x-rays to prove it, but it doesn't actually matter whether it's the okay. fourth or the fifth or the sixth. It's the highest point of the withers. Okay. Okay. That you measure. Okay. Um, and then how long is it going to take, Peter? You said you said we're going to roll this out in a in an intense measuring campaign until the end of March. Yeah. But when end it comes February. end of February. Yes, yeah. Um ultimately how long is the SAEF looking at everyone at, at every pony being measured and on their board? Well we aim for it um, to start being um, on board by the by March twenty twenty four. And then we want to do it every year. Then we need okay. to do it in, in all the provinces every year. And we were discussing this earlier on the lifetime height certificates can only be awarded to ponies that you were saying, uh, Sheila, you said you had very few horses, if any, I think, that had a date of birth in their passport. Correct. You said it was just a year of birth. Correct. And you were explaining that that obviously makes a difference if, a, if there are two ponies, one was born in January 2018 and the other one was born in December 2018. That's not, that's not a fair comparison. So will lifetime height certificates only be awarded for horses with a date of birth, unless they're nine. Yes, definitely. It can only be with horses that we, we we have a date of birth and that there's a proof of a date of birth. Obviously, when it's in dispute, um, there's no way of knowing. You can be relatively sure. I, I mean, we, I was talking to Sheila and she said, uh, even up to 10, you can be relatively sure. But there's still, uh, there might still be a dispute. Okay. Um, and so once horses have measured their final height at the age of eight, they don't need to resubmit again for the annual measurement. Mm. Okay. Um, Peter, you were raising something earlier on, and I, I just think it is, I know it's probably we're on the cusp of it not being relevant anymore because of the ages of the ponies, but there was a big dispute in the show jumping world a few years ago where ponies had been awarded a lifetime height certificate, 
and had then not measured as ponies, as you were, you were saying. And there was a, a time period, a grace period almost, that was awarded. Do you mind explaining that a little bit? And again, I just wanted to speak to the fairness of, yeah. of the process. Yeah, so as I understand, I and mean, it was before my time as well, but as I understand that there was an agreement uh, between the discipline associations uh, in 2018, and this is actually still part of the rules uh, in terms of uh, pony measuring for SA show jumping. But the rule is that ponies that have, no, have not received a pony height certificate even before 2015, um, but was allowed to compete as ponies uh, before 2015, will be given the grace to compete throughout their career and then until they, um, they retire. Mm -hmm. so, so ponies that just to just to clarify that, so ponies that have a life certificate, life certificate obviously would be allowed, to, but also ponies that didn't get uh, a life certificate before twenty fifteen. Okay. Um, but was well, at that stage were allowed to compete. Okay. Yeah. And under what circumstances would a pony that's had a lifetime height certificate be called on to be remeasured? Is that is that a possibility for people? Well, that's a very interesting question. I think you should ask. <laughs> well, I, I, I think so. Uh, we've mentioned it before. In one year, you can have a year's age difference. Mm. And we know that if uh, if you um, say the horse was born in 2015, um, it's eight in 2023. But if it was born at the end of the year and you're measuring the beginning of the year, it's not eight, it's seven. So it could, in fact, grow. It could grow if the the age is misrepresented in the past. I was just going to say, I mean, there's sometimes ponies get passed around and passed around and you don't maybe have the correct date of birth or year of birth. Yeah. So, so you, you, I mean, it's going to extend the, the, the time factor if you're going to have to age the horses. But you get, even the world experts get less accurate the older the horse mm. becomes. Mm. So you can be really spot on, probably up until the age of six, and then your accuracy declines, and it gets less and less accurate after ten. I mean, I do think that it would—it's very difficult to mistake a ten-year-old and a twenty-year-old, mm. or a really aged pony and a and a ten-year-old. But if it's a question of a year or two years, it is possible to make a mistake. Mm. Okay. So, and again, it's just always being aware of keeping the system as fair and as safe for everyone yeah. as possible. Um, Sheila, you did mention that the show, the show can make a difference to the height of the pony. Um, so obviously a relaxed pony is a smaller pony. And you were talking about people shaving off the feet. Um, I don't, I'm not doing this to bring the sport into disrepute, but I do think for parents who are perhaps trying to do the best thing for their kid and buy them a pony, they're not aware of some of the techniques that are used to make uh, pony measure. Do you mind just discussing that a little bit? Like I was not aware actually of all the factors that can influence height. Yes, there are. I mean, obviously ex excitement, sedation makes a huge difference up to two centimeters. So um, we're all shorter if we're calmer, Sheila. We all grow when we walk into home affairs. So. Yeah, <laughs> but sedation does. Um, the, the, the pony's head has to, or neck and head has to be in a neutral position. Trying to feed it off the floor or make it lower its head can also make a difference. Dehydrating them, not giving them water, will um, lower the height. Exercising them endlessly until they're absolutely exhausted will um, lower the height. And um, they have, and this is in the rules, that um, in the past, in order to make ponies measure, they would smash their withers. And you can make two to three centimeters. Actually, fracture with. fracture the trans the 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 process, the process of the vertebrae correct. to make them smaller. So you may not measure a pony that has a fractured wither. Okay. So purely if, because it was done to make the measure. Okay. So there's no point in doing it because if a pony arrives and it's got a fractured wither, you know it never measured. <laughs> it, oh, it, okay. It's not going to be measured. So okay. and that was to stop the cruelty pertaining to trying to make a mm. make a animals measure. I mean, that's just astonishing, you know, for, you know, you think of us in this sport, maybe for a bit of glory, but certainly not fame or mm -hmm. fortune. It's astonishing that things like that are, are things that need to be in FEI rule books. Yes. But, you know, here but we are. They, they've evolved because of, mm. because of what's happened. They've, 
that, that that's become a rule now. Yeah. Yeah. So so in in the vetrex we've got um, the article is zero one eight six, uh, and that gives the measuring vets a, a right to refuse to measure at oh, these oh, measuring okay. sessions if um, there's any evidence that there's anything wrong with the withers or if the pony is sweating and breathing abnormally due to um, intense exercise or something like that, pony has sore feet or if the pony is lame or if the pony is in a poor condition or if the pony shows any signs of being sedated, then the measuring vets can refuse okay. and take bloods, obviously. Okay. Um, Peter, I don't know if this is a question for, for legal, you know, in your position, um, or if it's something that would obviously happen on a case-by-case -case basis, but... It's also pertinent to vets. You know, Sheila, we were discussing earlier on what happens if a pony's had a lifetime height certificate, it's been bought on the basis that it's a pony, and it gets subsequently measured for whatever, you know, and, and I'm not sure legally, like, as, as the owner of a pony, if somebody else says, well, I want that pony measured, does it have to go through the SAEF to, you know, to force me to have my lifetime height certificate pony remeasured? So the, the regulation is actually only speaking to horses that has been newly registered with the SAF from 1st of January 2022. So it's not applicable to those horses that received life height certificates before that period of time. Okay. And so as I said, you, you still have horses from 2015 um, up to 2022 that has to be measured annually because they haven't reached the age of eight. So they will still be, be, be measured. but. Um, from the SAF's point of view, if once a life size certificate in the past have been issued, um, that's it. We're you not, can't. You we, can't call it back. We, we, okay. we can't call it back. Yeah, we're we're okay. not going to do that. Yet. Okay. All right. No, I just wanted to check that. Just uh, as a point of interest, what would happen if the horse was actually six, but they claimed it was eight, and then you measured it at ten, and it, yeah, and now suddenly it's grown two centimeters. Yeah, that's a very interesting question. Whether um, in, in terms of the validity of um, life height certificates, mm -hmm. but but that's um, as we said earlier, you know, that's something that we're following the FEI on, and that we we're giving life height certificates at the age of eight, and that seems to be the uh, international standard. Mm -hmm. So we we're going to follow that. But I agree with you that they, they, it's certainly a possibility that a horse is still growing beyond that. That age. And I suppose then, Sheila, you know, maybe the, the benefits of having it being with an FEI or SAEF approved appointed vet, it actually minimizes the liability of the vet who did the measurement, you know, because, you know, it's been done in a controlled environment. You know, if it would have been a genuine, there can't be any arguments that the vet was paid off or, you know, that the pony was purposefully misrepresented. You know, it minimizes the conspiracy theory element of, you know, everyone was in on it to get the pony to measure, I hope. No, I think fair enough. But I think um, one of the th things that I feel is that... that um, You're not sure that the pony a, you're looking if at If you have eight. a certificate, then you can... Uh, that certificate is only valid so long as, for instance, in a pony, its height remains the same. Just as if I go to an auction and I buy a, a Rembrandt. And I get a certificate with it saying it's authentic. Mm. When I want to go and sell it, I'm told it's a fake. That certificate's worthless. Mm. So if you have a certificate, at any time you want to be able to prove it's valid. Mm. My opinion, that's my opinion, that it doesn't matter whether it's a life height certificate, that you could you should could at any time prove that yes, my horse measured at that and it's now three years down the line, it's still measured it's at that. that. That is the height. Yes. I know, I'm shrinking. So I'm very age. against um, life height certificates, and again, because of the age, mm. it's all very well. We, we're going to cause an uproar if, if you can't measure a pony unless you have yeah. a birth certificate for it. And how am I going to prove the birth certificate presented to me is the birth certificate for that pony? Well, we were discussing the ages of thoroughbreds, you know, before we went on air, and saying that thoroughbreds all turn one on the first of September. So if you've got something born on the thirtieth of August, hide it. Around the corner. I still have a birthday. You know? Mm. We do. So, yeah. I, I mean, agreed, if it was born on the 25th of August, they will claim it was born on the mm. 1st of September. Mm. But, uh, yes, yes, you know. But there is a birth yeah. certificate. Mm. There, there, there is, though, a, an extraordinary measuring session that 
uh, discipline action can ask for. Oh, okay. Um, or if they feel mm. that, um, you know, there's a complaint or that mm. their opponent should be measured. Um, there's also the established rule that the ground jury as a show may feel that there's a complaint that the opponent should be measured. Okay. But whether, and that's very, very interesting what you're asking, is that whether that's fine if the pony is still under act, but once he's received a life height certificate and there comes that mm. complaint, um, I suppose we'll have to deal with with that when mm. that happens. But um, that is an interesting yeah. question. My, my follow-on was going to be, it would be interesting to see if, um, and I'm sure there's been a case like this just because it's equestrians and, you know, we love the law, but um, if where the liability lay, you know, did the liability lie with the vet, which Sheila said is a concern for all vets, you know, like, uh, am I now responsible? Or did the liability lie with the seller or, you know, but... Um, as you said, a case by case basis, it'll depend wildly from pony to pony and situation to situation. Yeah, and that's and, and, and in that example, I mean, if the pony grows, nobody's really responsible. And yeah. you've given a life heart certificate because you said you'll issue one at eight years old, but um, it's a living being, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a growing being, so you can't um, stop it from growing. And um, Sheila, I mean, eight is even beyond, it, originally it was seven, was the lifetime height certificate, and seven was meant to be the agreed time that. Everyone had stopped growing. Um, they did find that um, with the research that was done, that they can still grow between the ages of seven and eight. So is eight meant to be, and what's the final decider that the growth plates are closed? No, the growth plates. No. The, 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 not necessarily, because okay. in most instances they do close a bit earlier. Because um, it's just muscling and things like that? that probably. Would, okay. And probably is growth plates. I'm just trying to think what would... Um, what would make yes. your pony grow until it was 154? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, put it this way. It, it was always that. It was always 154. <laughs> Horrifying. I like that you're looking at it with the naked eye going, oh my, no, no that's just not going to happen. <laughs> um, guys, I think we've pretty much covered it. I, I, I think the it's interesting that the legislation has been in place for a while and it maybe needs to trickle a little bit more quickly through mm. the DAs. Congratulations on your first measuring session and the first 23 ponies for for the year, 23 ponies in 2023. Well, I haven't had any death threats yet. Not yet. She, it's only been, it hasn't, it's just been 24 hours. <laughs> easy, <laughs> easy times. Um, is there anything else either of you would like to add to the discussion before we sign off? Yeah, I would just say um, that um, the public out there should give us an opportunity to do this and see how we roll it out and how it works. And it's just been, SAFE has been inundated with complaints of every pony competition about pony heights. And, and we have Youth to, Champs, which was yes. recently at Kyle Army Park, yeah, yeah. was the latest. So we have to address this. This has always been our data. So we, we're addressing this. We are trying to make it fair. So let's see, see if it works. And um, I just want to be clear that this is at no cost to the pony owner. That's correct, yeah. Okay, yeah. so I think that's a, that's a great initiative from SAEF. Yeah. Mm. Sheila, anything you would like to add? No. You're both happy? For now. For now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you both for joining us in studio. I'm sure we're going to have an update on how this is rolling out, hopefully, in the next six months. It's been great having you here. <laughs> If you've just joined us in the last few minutes, you've been listening to our podcast, Afraid of Heights, where we've been discussing the new initiative from the South African Equestrian Federation, rolling out national pony height certificates. It's going to be happening in your area soon. Stay tuned to the South African Equestrian Federation via the mailing list or the social media channels to keep updated. My name is Georgie Roberts, and you have been listening to the SAEF podcast from the horse's mouth. Be sure to join us next Wednesday.